And just like that, the Tampa Bay Rays 2023 season is over in a flash. Pretty quick. Let's talk about it right now. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. And we are the host of the Lockdown Race Podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first listen every day. Be sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Lockdown Rays, as well as all the other podcasting platforms. You can also find us on the social medias X and Instagram and email us with your mailbag questions, I guess off-season related questions as well. Lockdown Rays at gmail.com. Well, the Tampa Bay Rays lose yesterday afternoon to the Texas Rangers by a score of 7-1 to one and quickly being eliminated in the best of three wild card. Somehow, in some ways, uh, I guess, and Ulysses, you could speak to this more because you were at the game, that the Rays looked worse in Wednesday's game than Tuesday's game. Um, Before we get started. Yeah. I would like to say that now it has become tradition to now also have postmortem episodes after the season. And this episode specifically, and maybe another one, but we usually have a vent episode or two after the, uh, the elimination has happened. This is one of them. You want in, in depth, We look at everything minute, detail by detail. We will have that. We always do. But that ain't this episode. This episode episode. is about the poopy performance that the Rays put on the last couple days. And credit to the Rangers for scoring runs and keeping the other team from scoring runs as well. I'll say this. If the Rangers play like they've played the last couple days, they could make it to the World Series and they could win the World Series if they showcase what they did. Or maybe the Rays were just that bad and that wet behind the they, ears. And I know I've made this point, um, you know, over the course of the season. And I think somebody had commented on YouTube. I hate um, responding directly to comments, but we had said that the Rays have been in the postseason before, that they should be battle tested and that they should be ready for this moment. And I think that is true to some extent, but I don't know if we were saying that when the rash of injuries and circumstances occurred to where Jose Siri is out of the fold, Brandon Lau is out of the fold, other guys are out of the fold and you're forced to play guys who just have under a hundred major league at bats to their name, like Curtis me. I understand. And that. I was and talking I- more so yeah. in comparison to a team like the Orioles or a team who has, a complexion of players that haven't won a world series or haven't been in the playoffs multiple times with respective organizations, whether it's with their current organization or other organizations previously. Yeah, no. um, Going back to your original question about playing flat, my goodness. um, It was awful. It was awful. And as you can tell, I did my part. You were one of the 8,000 fans there. Bro. Oh, wait, I have that number wrong. It was uh, maybe 18,000. 20,198. Uh, that was sad. That was sad. Uh, the performance on the field or the attendance or both? <laughs> Kevin Cash moves, performance, everything. Everything about the playoffs this year was horrible. Um, yeah. Start times, broadcasters that our Red Sox guys calling raised games and then calling uh, the crowd, not a crowd, but a group, just everything was pitiful, man. And if we, if we talk of what happened in, in the field, like just real quick, I cannot believe that you in the playoffs, you're about to be eliminated and you don't have people constantly warming up. I don't understand that. Why Why did Zach Eflin have to pitch the fifth? Why? <laughs> he just got rocked. Yeah. 
you just get rocked for four runs. And you, you're going to – no, that's it. I'm sorry. Love you, Zach. Everything that you've done. But give me the ball. Give me yeah. the ball. You don't – it's okay. You don't have it. Let's see if somebody in the in the bullpen can do their job. You didn't use Pete Fairbanks at all. Robert Stevenson. Yeah, what? that's true. That's crazy to me. You didn't use – you didn't use <laughs> – you didn't use them. What were they there for? Yeah. Why were they there? Also, Jonathan Aranda just grabbing pine in the ninth inning. You've got a really good scoring opportunity against a right-handed pitching Leclerc. You put Margot out there? No. Make moves. What is, why is Jonathan Aranda not 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 facing that that righty? Just honestly, Kevin Cash is a tremendous manager. But I will say that again in an actual f better way. Kevin Cash is a tremendous regular season manager. One of the best to be a regular season manager. You do what you do with that statement. Yeah. Think of what you can. We have more to discuss on this for sure. But we have to tell you this. The MLB playoffs are here, which means... The clock is ticking on your chance to 100 times your cash on daily fantasy baseball. It's never been more exciting than it is now with studs like Ronald Acuna, Mookie Betts, Shohei Otani. Pick more or less on stars based or pick more or less on stats for these stars like home runs, hits, strikeouts, and more for up to a 100 times payout on Sleeper, yes, Sleeper is the place to be uh, to get your picks right, and you could win B.I.G. big. So here's what you need to do right now, since you're not going to be watching Rays baseball. You might be watching highlights. Go ahead and use that promo code locked on L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. Again, go to sleeper and then use the promo code locked on l o c k e d o n all right uh the tampa bay rays um to your point about zach eflin he seems to indicate that the rangers somehow squirrely knew what was coming that they had anticipated the pitches or maybe there was pitch tipping Maybe shenanigans. I don't know. What I do know is that, like you said, he just wasn't having it. And and that happens. You know, it's unfortunate that it's in the playoffs instead of uh, mid-May or late June or something like that. But the sinker was hit hard. The cutter was hit hard. Just about everything yeah. was hit hard. And I'll tell you, the moment where <laughs> I think it was like, I don't think the Rays are going to win this game. Harken back to the first inning where a ball – was hit over Manny Margot's head in center field. <laughs> I already see your expression there. Uh, Manny Margot tracking back on it, stumbles and falls on a play that should be somewhat routine. Manny Margot looked like a guy who had never played baseball or softball, and you're out there, hey, shag a couple fly balls. Bro, he looked I like a 70-year-old. A, a Beer league softball guy. I I, I could have done that. I could have done that. 20,198 could have done what he did or didn't do there. Ooh, why is Margot doing what I can? That's not that's not yeah. all right. It's not okay. It's and what what like what happened? Where it, I know he's been mainly playing corner outfield lately and over the last couple seasons, but that must there was be a it. period in his career where center field he could handle and yeah, do it again. Practice makes perfect. Maybe yes. if, if you know, that's one. And another thing is he is getting older. He has suffered injuries that's on true. the last two seasons that maybe have, have cut up to him, but yeah, no, he, he has looked awful in center field, like awful. Yeah. Awful. And this is the guy that you're going to be paying $10 million to next year, by the way. Oh, that's so, well, 
we think the Rays will be paying him $10 million. It might be another team that's paying him $10 million. If there's well, a team that'll take him off the Rays' hands for a couple packs of uh, bubble gum. Well, yeah. And also, if, if somebody else is, uh, if he's wearing somebody else's uniform, it's because the Rays either give a really shiny prospect or because they're actually eating the loss and they're right. eating most of that money. But regardless, that's, that's, that's conversations I didn't want to have in the first week of October. I wanted to talk about, Hey, how about them race? Yeah. Doing what they needed to do against the Rangers. But no, uh, it, it, it's just, I mean, I'm sorry. Like everybody can, we all have our opinions. And as long as we, we present them in a respectful way, I think that's, that's completely fine. If we, if we differ on, on, on things, especially because it's baseball, it's a sport. It's the, it's the least, um, it's the most important thing out of least important things. Um, I don't understand yeah. the Taylor Wall situation at all. I'm well, sorry. I don't understand it. Kind of tied into that, um, and I know how you feel about Taylor Walls, but and we can get into that. But the Manny Margot thing of him not being prepared or comfortable or ready to play center field, you could also spin that with another guy like Curtis Mead, who – Again, I am not casting dispersions on Curtis Mead. It's a tough situation where you've played 25 major league games and you're thrown right into the fire of the playoffs. But 80 to 85% of his action this year in the big leagues and probably in the minors too, I know he moved around a little bit, was at third base. And you stick him at second base. Um, And the ground ball that went to and through Curtis Mead, that's routine for 96, 97% of second baseman. If Brandon Lau is playing second base, he handles that. So maybe it is a case of Curtis Mead needs more offseason work and reps at that position. Maybe it's just a case of he's not a utility guy. Stop, stop trying to make him a super utility guy. Or, Give him a position, whether it's third base or first base or DH, and let him work through it and be the best that he can be there. Because if balls like that are hit to him and they eat him up, Oh man, there's going to be a lot of errors and a lot of runs scored based on that. And not everybody can be a utility guy. Not everybody can be a Ben Zobris. It's very difficult to do so. And yeah. they rate and the Rays they really won like thousands of those guys. Like I understand how that is, how that is useful. Of course, it's useful if everybody can play different positions. Of course, it is. But sometimes maybe you you shouldn't do that yeah. with a. It's players. only useful if the guy who's being moved to that spot can at least somewhat competently handle. That's and fun. and who knows? It could have been the, the moment was too big. Curtis Mead, like I said, that you've got a half a dozen rookies that are getting meaningful action that are pressured to perform in their first but playoff action. Kevin, but, it, but it was not good. Obviously, errors can happen, but Curtis Mead did not place himself there at second base. That was yeah. the front office, and that was Kevin Cash. So I understand that people don't want to look over there and they just want to like blame the players. But there is also some blame to be shared in that office and in, in, in the and in the coach's room. You see his numbers where he has been in the lineup in September. It's been mostly third. It's been mostly third. Why are you sticking him there in second base uh, in the playoffs? I I I don't understand. There were so there were so many bad decisions. Yeah. So many and, bad, horrible decisions made. And that's the role of the managers, the front office, the coaching staff is to put players in the best position to have confidence yes. and to succeed. That's what yes. it is at the end of the day, where guys are feeling, okay, I'm ready for this moment. I can handle this moment. I'm not in uncharted, uncomfortable waters, especially in the playoffs. Again, it's one thing to kind of, shift and play around a little bit in spring training or over the course of a season where you're you're down by a bunch or up by a bunch or hey it's just more or less a rest day we're kind of throwing out our b or c squad so let's try some different things i'm okay with that but the playoffs is not to be the time to experiment and put guys in in places that they're really not prepared to be in at that moment I don't understand that. Um, the the I I know maybe I sound like a broken record, but I do want to talk about Taylor Walls. Um, yeah. Before you talk about Taylor Walls, let's let's uh, give you a breather. 
Yes. You can you can work up the energy and the passion and the anger. <laughs> so before uh, we get to uh, the Taylor Walls rant, we got to tell you about this. Um, Lockdown Race fans, uh, you may have heard us talk about the free new app just for sports fans called Bunches. Well, Bunches is a new social network built for sports fans. No politics, no doom and gloom, unless you're a Yankees or Red Sox fan. Just sports. They've recently released a new scoreboard feature that lets you check live scores in the app and chat about live games as they are ongoing. You can chat about the Rays and join the Locked On Bunch by clicking the link in the show notes description to get the app or go to the Apple App Store and download Bunches. Now it's B-U-N-C-H-E-S. So download the Bunches app today. And when you do, our friends at Bunches have featured the Locked On MLB Bunch in the Discover tab. You can also click the link in our description show notes to join the Locked On MLB Bunch community today in the last two playoffs in the last two playoffs including this one now if you were to ask race fans or as locked on race likes to say if we were to make a pie chart (laughs) the biggest slice of this pie chart would be offense has been the problem in the last two playoffs why Oh, why are you going to make it more difficult on yourself to score by putting a guy? Kevin, I, I looked up the, the, the numbers yesterday uh, against against righties. Against lefties, you know, I understand why I don't like it, but I understand what the, he wanted to do with Taylor Walls there. Mm-hmm. But to start a guy against right-handed pitching who is batting 179, and has a 72 WRC plus a 72 WRC plus. He can be a deity. He could be <laughs> Zeus with a glove. And I'd still say, take a seat, pal. Take a seat. You ain't helping us with what we need help with, which is putting the ball in play getting runs in my man i i love how he base runs pinch run up i love how he defends eighth inning defensive replacement you cannot start a guy with these numbers in a playoff game in an elimination game you can't you cannot and 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 i don't know last year we saw him by the way last year if you don't remember kevin cash did a kevin crash move last year and in the playoffs, he decided to pinch hit Isak Paredes and put Taylor Walls in. Yep, you're right. The guy who had 20 home runs and co-led the team in home runs, he decided to pinch hit that guy for mm. a bunt that did not go well and then proceeded to not put down in the in, in one attempt and then struck out. By the way, Isak Paredes grew up to be the next season a 30 homer guy. Kevin Cash decisions Kevin Cash's decisions in, in, in playoff baseball is it's honestly where does his mind go so with Taylor Walls would you have rather seen this scenario where Junior Caminero gets the start and maybe Taylor Walls starts at second for Curtis Mead the guy who's played 25 major league games you know honestly I I think I would have been a little bit I would have done a little bit different I would have gone shortstop Junior Caminero Third base, I would have put Curtis Mead, where he has been playing. Okay. And second base, I put Isak Paredes. Okay. Who has shown that he can handle second base as well. So that's how I would have played it. But yeah, it, it 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 was all unfortunate for sure. I'm not fully on board with the the. I know how you feel about Taylor Walls. I do think he provides um, value in multiple angles, and I have a sneaking suspicion that Taylor Walls, whether he hits or doesn't, he's going to be part of this organization for a while just because he can play the multiple positions and because of the other things he does besides having a bat in his hand. And I think you're right. I think he could be in a raise uniform for like 
the next two, three years. I think you're right. And that makes me so upset. Yeah. That makes yeah. me so upset because, you know. Especially after the Wander Franco, with the uncertainty there. Um, yeah. You know, maybe if, if Wander Franco was in the fold and you have Junior Caminero up here, I guess it also uh, depends on Carson Williams' development as well. Um, but that kind of more lends itself to, well, maybe we do or should keep Walsey around. I think you're right. I think you're 100% right on that. Um, another decision. Uh, let, let me sit down the guy who is league average against lefties um, this season. But I'm going to put a guy who hasn't played for three and a half weeks, has a broken hand, and uh, hasn't seen any major league a, a, a ball. Yeah, but I'm, so let me sit down Josh Lowe and put Jose Theory in there. What are you – Yeah. I mean, these decisions, it, it's like they were in a room in a haze – and they they forgot everything. They forgot everything. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's maybe they're they're looking so they're looking at so many numbers that they are making themselves just go in circles and 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 and, and not really seeing what's right in front of them. So like paralysis I, by over analysis instead of the gut feel and let's put the numbers in the pie charts and the spreadsheets aside and just look at, <laughs> Hey, how have these guys looked and performed over the last couple of weeks, month plus, how are they feeling legitimately? Let's use the, the eye test. And, and, and not even that though. I'm not, I'm not going like traditional. Blah, blah, blah. No, I'm just saying like Josh Lowe is showing <laughs> that he's a starter guy. Like this is it. Like he, he has something to play for, man. He has something to play for, like that humanness matters, and I think it's it's getting forget it's being forgotten by 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 just putting your head in in, in spreadsheets and and not, and not just like hey wait these are human beings you know yeah it happened to the Blue Jays as well right forty seven pitches Barrios is taken out what what are you doing mm -hmm. what are you doing yeah I, have some feel have some touch for the moment these are human beings they're not statistical points on a spreadsheet god yeah use all the information you can all the information you can is great especially in the regular season but in the post season how did you fall in love with this game if you're an, an analytics guy you didn't fall in love because of shifts you didn't fall in love with the game because of like oh after this third guy i'm gonna go with no you fell in love because somebody ran hard because you saw a home run because you saw a strikeout you saw human things yeah I, I, I don't know, man. I, it's just, it feels, it feels let down. And again, this is a vent session. Yeah. Venting session. No, I think that's a, that's a strong word. Let down. That's what this season feels like in so many iterations and factors and in instances, because I was confident, believe it or not, going into this best of three wild card series. I don't know about beyond that going into the ALDS, ALCS, but I figured at home, uh, best of three against the Rangers, you could you could handle yourself. And alas, that didn't happen. Uh, of course, the the status of, of Luke Rayleigh and Jose Siri um, changed the complexion a little bit. And um, just going back to the game from yesterday, Nady Evaldi, I know we had mentioned it on the previous show about his stuff not being quite there of late. Well, he dialed it up. He found a, a second, third, fourth gear uh, yesterday. It was that was playoff Evaldi with the the splitter. Uh, getting strikeouts and double plays, 96 fastball at times at the top of the zone, able to dial it up. Um, that's a guy that you look at and say, okay, yeah, he's been there, done that. He uh, he knows his way around a playoff start or two. And then, um, yeah, just other little things where it is a game of inches and you wonder if it's like where Randy Rosarena couldn't handle a, a diving attempt in left field. It's like, man, I feel like he's made that play before. Josh Lowe couldn't handle a diving attempt uh, in uh, right field. And it's like, man, seems like he, he's made that play before. He's capable of making that play. And, of course, you had the ground ball from Curtis Mead or to Curtis Mead. You had the Manny Margot uh, ball hit over. It was just like multiple, multiple insta uh, instances what? of, man, this team just is not right, not there, not but why not up to their level or capability. But why not? Were they not there at their at their capability? Was were they were they playing um, stressed, nervous? I mean, do, do they have like a a sense of like 
we need to perform because yeah. we're a maybe they were team. because you were your backs are literally against the wall and maybe you hesitate for a second and you think and I know these are professional, highly paid athletes, but there is some doubt that can and will creep in at times where it's like, oh, can I go after that ball? If I, if I dive and it gets by me, uh, what do I do? Uh, then that's a, that's a double, triple inside the park homer. I think just a little bit of, of everything. Um, so they were inside their heads. They were, yeah. I mean, it, it did look like that. And man, but, but the, the, the hitting, I mean, it, it, they made everybody look like a Cy Young, bro. Make everybody make yeah, it look like, true. like for the last two uh, wild card series now, it's yeah. it's a problem. I know, I know. People are gonna say, look, in in the big picture, two games. Anybody can look bad in two games, and you're a hundred percent right. You know, you, you the 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 Rockies can beat the Rays in in two um in two games, and and that doesn't mean that the Rockies are better than the Rays. But in the playoffs, that's 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 why you play it, right? Like that's that's when you're supposed to uh be above that and 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 get above that but yeah. if you continuously do what the race have been doing now and which is wild card exit in a disappointing fashion in 21 um disappointing exit in the wild card against the the guardians in 2022 disappointing exit against the texas rangers in 2023 i'm sorry i'm i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be a seal clapper about it it's 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 not good. Yeah. At some point, good. you got to perform in the playoffs. It you got to be like, uh, man, I, I hearken back to being a Colts fan in the late nineties throughout the two thousands, where it was like, man, the, the Colts will go 14 and two, 13 and three, 12 and four. But once that cold weather hits, once it's playoff season, Peyton Manning can't crack it for whatever reason. I mean, eventually did that one. And then the second one with Denver, but it was like, we have so many opportunities. We're in the playoffs every single year, and we can't get beyond the first or the second round. So, well, you know, it's like the, the Rays are exactly on that Jerry Depoto frame of mind. We just got to go as many times to the dances. Which obviously, the more you go to the 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 playoffs, the more yeah. chances you got to go to the World Series. Like it's not rocket science, but uh, you're not going to get there if you just perform horribly in the wild card series year year after year. You're just not. Yeah. I. I Look, we're gonna close down soon, but it's 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 been disappointing. It's been a letdown watching this team, a really good team, just be decimated with injuries and and have to rise above that. But sometimes you, uh, you you have as many excuses, you know, as the other team in front of you. The Texas Rangers had injuries too. Okay, yeah. um, everybody has injuries. I know the I we all know the Rays injuries. Other teams have those too. Right. So uh, I, I, I got, However, I will say the, well, yes, everybody has injuries and to some star all-star caliber players, but you're talking about a Cy Young contender and an MVP contender <laughs> or, you know, that's, you know, 12 I mean, to 14 more that you're taking off the roster in a flash that that hey, doesn't help. I, that doesn't help. But then I'm, I'm pretty sure the the Rangers fans were wondering coming into this series and possibly in the future series, they're going to be like, damn, imagine if we had Scherzer and DeGrom. That's true. Yep. It's, it's all, yeah. You have to look at the whole picture for sure. And it also doesn't help when, um, you know, like that's two hall of famers. Like that's two hall of famers. We're missing a guy that might not play baseball anymore. And a guy who is a really good pitcher and could win a Cy Young one time. And And who knows how good of a pitcher he's going to be when he returns too. Uh, They're missing two Hall of Tommy John surgery. So um, I understand. Yeah. So it's it's tough. It's difficult for sure, and it definitely it's near impossible. Basically, is impossible uh, to win a playoff game when you score uh, a total of what one run over the last. Thank, eight thank you, thank you, Curtis Mead. Thank you, Curtis Mead, uh, for 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 showing up, man. And I don't know. It was that last. I was in left field. That was a really good at bat. Uh, was it a ball? Was it a strike? That last pitch? Oh, of the game? Yeah. Uh, I on replay it looked a little bit low, but when it's a full count, you have to protect. It it, it, it looked it, off it was, from, yeah, from where I was. Yeah. What sucked? Last thing here, the first inning was awful with the uh, Manny Margot malfunction in center <laughs> field. 
The last inning was awful when Manny Margot swings at a breaking pitch that's about a foot, foot and a half outside. You need a dang yardstick Bro. or a mop to, to make contact with that thing. Like, that's that's the one. I'm like, why is Jonathan Aranda not in this situation? And also, what a horrible at bat by Mark. I don't – what happened to Margot? He was doing so well with the bat coming off the injury. We highlighted him. Yeah, Almost I mean, he had you know, multiple four-hit games, a three-hit game, two-hit game. I mean, he's – you know, he basically raised his average like 30 points. I yeah. Think, something like that I, I, last month. Look, I, it's – we're going to close soon. Um, Very disappointed. Very uh, let down. This is still a good team. It was an enjoyable season to, to, to watch really good baseball. But ultimately – uh, I mean, I guess hang the wild card banner. Like, I guess we're used to that now. Um, that's yeah. Can we not do that anymore? Can we not do that? Can we yeah. not do the wild card banner? I know it's like, oh, you're taking it for granted. Oh my gosh, other fan base is like, I get it, and you have a point. But today it's venting season, yeah. and today I don't care for wild card banners. Tomorrow I might say they are really good. Today, bleep them banners. Bleep them banners. Yeah. Um, no, the, uh, the Curtis me not taking bad off shoulder, uh, had some comparisons to, uh, what was it? Willie Adamas in the 2020 world series yeah. where he did not take his bat off the shoulder. Maybe not as bad because at least Adamas was more established in that end and that angle where Curtis Mead again, he's just well, getting started. I, I hate Willie, it. Willie was Never. walking back. Willie was walking back when the pitch was being yeah. thrown. <laughs> he he literally had stepped out of the box. He was halfway to the dugout. Yeah. By the time the pitch reached the catcher. So oh, and God. at least um I I don't really recall that pitch in particular. At least I understand Curtis Mead like that pitch was probably a it a, was a it, 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 fall it, it, too low in the zone and from but, left field it looked off. We all yeah. We're upset. You can notice by but my But umpires voice. nowadays, they're going to try to ring you up. They're going to try will. to steal the show. Yep. If it's in the vicinity, again, gonna with call a full it. count, you better protect. If it's yeah. – I mean, yeah, you have two strikes on you. You got to choke up and, and fight it off somehow, some way, some shape. So, all right. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have more to discuss. Uh, we've got a whole off season as well. So, um and up, guys. we'll be a little bit more in depth in this one. This was just a vent session. I might need another venting session um, tomorrow. Yeah. And you guys do too. And then maybe we can start going in depth about what went wrong starting on Monday. Yeah. Uh, drink your hot tea and mint. Yeah. Uh, take some lozenges. Thank you. Take a nap. I did my job. I performed. I performed. You showed up. I showed up. The boys did not show up. They didn't. No, they didn't, unfortunately. All right. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe, and we will talk to you on Friday.